Hey, good morning, everybody. Now, in the UK, this is the day where we hear who is going to be our next puppet prime minister after two months of a leadership contest for the next leader of the Conservative, or fake Conservative Party, as they are uh, better known, after Boris Johnson was forced to stand down. And I'm making this video at 7.30 in the morning. Now, by the time that most of you watch it, it's almost certain that Liz Truss will have been declared the next Prime Minister of the UK, which is quite worrying. And this is the person who said uh, that she wants uh, to cripple Russia's economy and encouraged uh, British young men to go and fight in Ukraine uh, at the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine before uh, rowing back on those statements. But by that time, it was too late for a few uh, hapless people who got went over there and got captured uh, and have been paraded in front of our television screens. But that's just a small thing compared to uh, so much of the destruction that has been done uh, by the fake Conservatives over the last 12 years. And both of the candidates, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak, were in that government and uh, voted for everything they did and uh, were in the cabinet meetings and I assume in the discussions and uh, about all the things that the government uh, has done to this country while well, they were in the government. Now, there's a lot to sort out because there's a big mess uh, or <laughs> multiple messes that we are in uh, as a country. And it's not just unique to the UK. There's a sort of the same mess uh, or messes are affecting most Western countries. Now, at the moment, number one uh, is the energy crisis, the cost of living crisis, the inflation crisis, whatever you like to call it. But really, it's a crisis of ideology uh, at its root because uh, this fake conservative government, backed by all the other political parties in Westminster, has been pursuing climate alarmism and net zero. And all the talk of alleviating bills and capping bills and capping prices, it's not going to change anything in the long term while they continue to go down this route of adhering to net zero ideology. We need to get rid of that entirely. This government has closed down 11 of 14 power state, coal power stations that we had in the country. They've done nothing uh, to invest in new nuclear power stations. They could have had 20 new small modular nuclear power stations constructed over their 12 years of government, which would now be provided providing uh, all the energy that we need, uh, as along with the coal power stations, if they hadn't uh, closed them down, and in some cases, dynamited them, blew them up, literally blew them up, with a minister standing in front of them saying how wonderful it was that they were blowing up coal power stations so they could never be used again. That's what this fake Conservative government is. So we shall see uh, what Liz Truss is going to do about this, but you know, she can play around with the figures and so on and alleviate people's um, immediate problems, or she can try to. Um, what I'm hearing this morning is that there may be some kind of plan afoot to cap uh, energy bills at the level that they are at the moment. Um, which would bring immediate relief, perhaps, to homeowners and businesses. But that money needs to be found from somewhere, and the government will have to make up the shortfall. So if they cap your energy prices up front, you're just going to pay more taxation because they'll have to increase tax rates in order to pay for it, either now or they'll have to borrow the money, and then you'll have, they'll increase taxation in the future. And also that will feed into inflation even more. So we'll just end up where we are. Um, and, and this is really just, it's addressing the symptoms, but not the disease. The disease is net zero. And the disease also, the second part of it, is pursuing and prolonging an unnecessary war in Ukraine. Uh, rather than trying to end the war, de-escalate, get back to normal relations with Russia so that we can continue to buy Russian gas, which all the countries in Europe, Western Europe, are all interlinked with the gas and energy infrastructure. So 
even though we don't buy much Russian gas in the UK, Germany does, France does, and if they can't get Russian gas, they need to buy Norwegian gas, which means that there's less gas for us here in the UK, so prices go up, and there isn't any in some cases. Uh, if everyone wants it, it might just run out. So... Um, that is part of the root cause that needs to be solved. But all the time that she's continuing with net zero and saying, well, we can do something now, but we've still got to go for net zero in 2030 or 2050, whenever it is. And they're still going to continue prolonging the Ukraine war. And they're still build, putting more debt on the top of 500 billion pounds of debt over the lockdown situation, over all the debt we had before, if they're going to continue piling more debt onto the nation, then that's just going to feed into inflation and, and that's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to make things worse in the long term. So the only way to solve this immediately is to end the conflict, de-escalate the conflict in Ukraine and abandon net zero. That's what I would do on day one. We'll see if Liz Truss does that. I doubt it. She'll try some other sticking plaster to, for the media, uh, you know, to for public relations rather than dealing with the root issue. And, and that's not uh, particularly uh, good leadership because you need to deal with the root issues. Um, to be a good leader, to get your country on a sound financial and economic and energy footing. Now, second thing, immigration. The fake Conservative Party are almost laughing at the population. They're gaslighting us. They're saying they're going to control immigration. They've said for 12 years they're going to control immigration. Every day there are more people coming illegally across the channel. And not just coming illegally, the border force, the Navy and the RNLI are helping people come across. They're picking them up in boats in the middle of the channel and ferrying them like a taxi service to Dover. From whence they go to four-star hotels and luxury accommodation all around the country and they get more money than a British person who needs it, who's suffering and maybe hasn't got a job because the fake Conservative Party kicked them out of their jobs effectively during lockdown. So they're gaslighting us with this and every single day they do nothing and in fact they're actively helping illegal immigrants to come into the country. And... They talk about the Rwanda scheme, which is a load of nonsense. It was created at the beginning of April before the local elections to throw a bit of red meat to the Tory voters. But not a single person, not a single migrant has been flown to Rwanda. And even if they did, we'd take one back. So it's not reducing the number, it's just essentially an exchange program uh, and it's another public relations exercise which is not going to do any good whatsoever. What the next Prime Minister needs to do is push the boats back to France where they find them rather than pick people up and bring them to England. Simple. Do that for a couple of weeks and then people will stop coming over because they'll know they try to get over the Royal Navy will put a grappling hook on their dinghy, tow it back to French waters, leave it there and come back and then find the next one. Put another grappling hook on it, tow it back to France, leave it half a mile off the French coast for the French coast guards to deal with and come back. French might not like that, but why are they letting people come into their country from wherever in the southern, through Italy and through Germany uh, and then pile up on the, the borders uh, of Normandy to come over to England. You know, so we'll sort it out, then they can sort it out. If the Greeks can stop people coming over, if the Australians can stop them, then so can we. We've got a big enough moat around our country, which is uh, at least 20 miles wide in its uh, shortest point. So we should be able to stop them, no problem at all. The only reason we can't or we don't is because the will of the government is not there. Uh, and that needs to change from day one. Will she do it? I doubt it, because she's talking about coming out of the ECHR after the next election in two years' time, and uh, and then we can put some legal cases in and draft some legislation to say that we can um, deport people to Rwanda. So basically, under their plans, nothing's going to change for two years. Uh, in about three years' time, 
they'll start exchanging people from for Congolese migrants in Rwanda. That is absolutely pathetic, and it isn't going to solve anything. It's just going to go on and on and on with these um, new the, the new puppet prime minister. Um, what else do they need to do? They need to get a grip of our national debt and our spending. Um, as I alluded to in the first bit, we're talking about um, possibly. Uh, piling another hundred billion pounds onto our national debt to alleviate energy bills because they won't abandon net zero on top of 500 billion pounds because of the disastrous policy of lockdown uh, and destroying businesses and saying people can't go to work and then having a furlough scheme to pay people to stay at home and not work. Um, and we now have a national debt getting on for two and a half trillion pounds, um, which of course is feeding into inflation. We need to get a grip of that and balance our budget. Otherwise, hyperinflation is just going to get worse and worse and worse and get out of control. And all our savings and all our pensions are just going to be worth nothing like they were in Weimar, Germany. So they need to get a grip of spending. We need to cancel HS2, stop overseas development, get rid of diversity officers, stop housing illegal migrants in hotels around the country. At least you know, put your own people first who need uh, emergency accommodation and that will be a limited uh, spend rather than increasing it all the time with illegal migration. And then cut the quangos. There's so many non-governmental organisations and quangos that the government fund. Billions of pounds of money goes into politicised NGOs and government quangos, um, which shouldn't get money uh, because they're not doing anything of value uh, for society. So cut that and uh, essentially cut whatever waste you can and get to, to a balanced budget. Uh, that's what we need to do again. Um, what else? Very important, of course, thing that I spent a lot of time talking about before all these other issues came up was fighting political correctness or wokery or cultural Marxism or whatever you call it, and not allowing that to destroy our culture and the fabric of our society, particularly in schools, where schools now routinely teach children all kinds of hideous, destructive nonsense rather than, you know, you, you, you send your kid to school, you expect them to learn maths and, and Shakespeare and history and how to read and write and how to speak French or Spanish or something and how to play the piano. You don't expect them to learn about gender queer theory and critical race theory and we're all going to die because of carbon dioxide, um, which is complete fallacy. Uh, this is what kids are getting taught mostly in schools. That seems to be the most important thing that what teachers and head teachers and unions think is the most important thing to teach children, but it's all a load of nonsense. They're teaching kids that there's they're not boys and girls. They can change between being a boy and a girl and a unicorn and an androgyne and a demigirl and a two-spirit dragon or whatever. It's all a load of rubbish. And then if they do that, they're given an identity, an LGBTQQIAAPPP identity, which they're supposed to take on. And then if they take on a particular identity, uh, then they're encouraged to get um, puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones and mutilate their bodies in British schools in England, in Wales, in Scotland. I don't know about Northern Ireland yet, but it's it's sort of uh, they're trying to push it there too. Uh, and that needs to stop right now because that is absolutely wicked. And it's happened in England on the watch of the fake Conservatives. Labour in Wales, the SNP in Scotland, obviously, because education is devolved. But they need to stop that. And they need to get rid of all these diversity courses, diversity inclusion and equality officers that just talk rubbish uh, and insist on there being quotas of different characteristics at different levels in different companies. So you, you appoint the best person for the job because they can do the job and they can make money for your company. 
That's the only criteria you need. And they get on with other people, you know, and maybe they go, they can, they can have a bit of a laugh down the pub with you as well. I mean, that's a criteria because you need that. If someone's in a, in a role where they're out facing, they need to be sociable and they need to be able to get on with other people to make deals and do business, you know, in, in a gentleman's club or something or down the pub. And that's another thing. Why? Do we have uh, the insistence on women's spaces, which I absolutely agree with because of the whole transgender nonsense, but wokery also wants to get rid of men's spaces. Look, let's have clubs for men, let's have clubs for women, changing rooms for men, changing rooms for women, and we need a delineation there. And if you want mi mixed spaces, fine. Um, but I think... Uh, we need to keep all these transgender people out of women's changing rooms and, and women's sports. But we also need to say to these radical feminists, leave men's spaces alone. Stop attacking gentlemen's clubs and, and men's clubs and whatever so, so people can, men can go uh, and talk to other men if they want. Why should men not be allowed to have spaces but women have spaces? It's that's equality. So, and that is um, getting rid of this uh, whole woke political correct uh, nonsense across the board. And what they need to do is change many of the laws which have been put in place by this government and also by Blair's administration before that have written wokery and, and political correctness and cultural Marxism into law, not least parts of the Equality Act, such as the public sector equality duty, which requires uh, all businesses, all government departments and all businesses that deal with governments to pay regard or to people's characteristics and um, and not to be unfriendly and uh, and so so the, the law is written in such a way that if anyone feels that someone is hostile or unfriendly to them because of a characteristic that they have even if they weren't being hostile it just depends on how you feel you can complain and a company will lose their contract and there'll be disciplinary uh, you know, processes and all this kind of stuff. Absolute nonsense. And it just takes away people's ability to function normally, you know, uh, and have a bit of banter if they want, not have banter if they don't want. Um, and in this kind of politically correct law has just got to go. So will the next leader of the Conservative Party, the fake Conservative Party and Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Liz Truss, uh, will she do all of that? Well, she sort of hints that she will, but the Tories always bait and switch. So don't hope for much. We need to come to the point where we realise you're not going to get any kind of sanity back with either fake Conservative, Labour, SNP, Green or Lib Dem because they're all banging the same drum. So that's why I've set the Heritage Party up. Um, the mainstream media are talking Liz Truss up today. We'll see. But I very much doubt that she's going to uh, do uh, the things that people are hoping for, and she'll probably be a massive disappointment. So come and join us in the Heritage Party. We're building and we're building towards having candidates able to stand in all 650 seats in the next general election to put our country on the right way back. We'll get rid of net zero. We will stand for free speech and liberty and traditional family values. We'll get this wokery and this grooming and sexualizing materials out of school. We will stop uh, prolonging the conflict in Ukraine and try to de-escalate it as much as we can as the United Kingdom so that we can get uh, cheap energy flowing again, which will alleviate the cost of living crisis and the, the energy crisis. As, as I said, get rid of net zero. I think I've said that before. <laughs> and uh, we will make sure that we rebuild our energy infrastructure with coal and oil and gas and nuclear um, to provide continual, uh, continuous stable, reliable energy, uh, rather than going for these ridiculous solar and wind um, 
sources of energy, solar panels and wind turbines, which don't provide any energy at all when the sun stops shining and the wind stops blowing. Absolutely ridiculous. We'll get rid of them and, and go for stable, reliable sources of energy so we can have cheap energy, so we can power our homes, power our economy, get our economy back on track, reduce the national debt, increase opportunity and equality of opportunity not a quality of outcome uh, for all. And that's the difference between um, being truly having a truly having an economy which works on, on common sense and opportunity rather than destroying your economy with wokery and political correctness. Um, okay, so many things uh, there that need to be done, which we will do as the Heritage Party because our principles are all set out uh, in our manifesto, principles of common sense and positivity. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. I've spoken for a long time again. I know some people write to me and they say, oh, keep your videos to five minutes. Well, I've tried. <laughs> There's too much to say. So anyway, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And uh, please also, if you can, if you've got £25 to spare uh, for the year, please join the Heritage Party, uh, become a member of the Heritage Party. Then you can be a candidate and you can support candidates as well. But, you know, even if you don't want to be a candidate, just you joining really helps us uh, in the party to uh, grow in influence and to stand more candidates. So please join us on heritageparty.org as well. Okay, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, have a great day.